G'day team, Andre Alapati here from the Red Stag Timber Hunters Club and welcome to my gear shed. With the summer coming to a close and to put you in the mood for the upcoming Raw, we thought we'd rewind the clock and take a look at some of our highlights and lowlights from the previous season. We had a pretty full on start to last year's hunting season, with a summer mission to some pretty epic Central Otago high country. After Yuli dropped a nice sham buck and I managed to dispatch a decent stag, we laid eyes on the real beast living way up high. However, despite our best efforts, he managed to give us the slip, which is bloody gutting to be honest. So after stewing over the footage of him for about a week or two, we decided to return to the same area in hope of finding him for a second time. We'll pick up the action as the lads make their way up into the terrain the big boy was spotted a fortnight earlier. Spotted him over stag, stay there. Oh, there's some crackers there, eh? That will be the 10 and the one that we're, that we're chasing. 4.30. We can get a shot from here. Hey, no. Just making our way, sidling through this basin. <coughs> On our way to where we seen that good stag a couple of weeks ago. And I was just pulling out the binos to have a wee look down this creek and then spotted, spotted a mob of stags just 430 metres away on a skyline. Um, they're up. They're, they're on to us, sort of, like they've caught our movement, but they definitely won't have our wind, so hopefully with a bit of luck, they shouldn't spook, we'll just give them a wee bit of time to settle, and I'm pretty sure, just with the binos, I've seen a good a good stag, at least two good stags in the group, so we're getting pretty fizzed. One of them's looking at bolting soon here, boy. One of, them, one of them's sort of looking at starting to bolt. Oh my god, bottom one's f***ing good. One under the rock's okay, but the bottom one's still the best. Got good tops. Looks like he's got big brows, good trays. I don't think he's the one that we're, oh he might be. He might be the one we're targeting. He's got a small bay on his right hand side. That one under the rock, eh? The one downhill on his own. The one under the rock's just a big 10, but that was one of the ones that this guy was with. Mm. Oh yeah. And that strip 10 as well. It's a tough call. He needs to look downhill for us. We need to figure out if it's got four on it. Oh, those two are back up on their feet. Just, just been assessing the stag. Um, one of his main features was four, four points on, on his right hand antler, but we had to wait for him to turn downhill to give us a, a better look at that hand, his right hand side. We definitely made the call now. He's got four up on that top and he's got that small bait on as well. So that's definitely the stag that we've been targeting. So 430 metres away, we're gonna try and find a rest and um, get him on the ground. Okay, this hold there, we're going to be pretty exposed soon. 
so we're probably gonna have to set up on this way, swampy bit. What are we now? Still 14. Some of them, some of them are bedded. The big boy's bedded. They definitely, oh no, he's back up on his feet. They sort of know something's happening, I think. It's gonna have to happen soon. It's not a good place for us right now. Have to try and make it happen from here. Might just give them a minute to try and relax again. Hopefully they relax. The stairs can sense something's up, but the guys have enough time to sit dead still and allow them to settle every time they look to be on the verge of bolting. Sam knows his luck won't hold forever, so he gets set as quickly and silently as possible to ensure that the opportunity isn't lost. Great. Right there, Dave, let's make some magic happen, boy. Okay, I need a light from the turn. Okay. Oh, he's moving. Yeah, that's him. You got him? Good? Yep. Quartering, quartering. No good. Sitting down. Okay, we've got time. It's all good. Here we go. Up again. Up again. You ready? Ready now. Yes! Woo! Got him! We got him, boy! Yes! How good! <laughs> How good. How good. Man. Just a whole heap of emotions running through my body, probably 99% adrenaline, but um, to come in here two weeks later with the, that target stag and uh, to find him even closer than, you know, closer to camp than where we thought we were going to have to head tonight. Um, and then it was just a case of moving down slowly. Got into a 14 metres at the end and um, had a nice flat rest through here in the swampy bit. And it was just a case of him giving me the shot broadside and uh, we made it pay. And as you see, he only sort of, oh, everyone else ran away sort of laterally, but he took off down, downhill, which is always a good sign of a heavy hit. And he just went legs up after about 50 metres. So I'm absolutely <laughs> pumped out. <laughs> Woo! Shot boy. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Yes! <laughs> oh man. I guess I need to show the tongue and tail when he arrives at bloody <sighs> one in the morning. One in the morning, he'll be bloody, we'll be sleeping in there. We'll be bloody walking out tomorrow to the pub. Welcome to the Hunting and Fishing New Zealand gear shed. We're going to use this opportunity to talk about some of the gear we use on our trips. We're in my shed at the moment, which is a staging point for a lot of our adventures. And the first thing I always look for is what pack we need to use. I tend to use the Tatonka Bisons. You know, I've got everything here from a 55, 75 and a 90 plus. We're getting organised for a Fiordland mission, so I'm going to be using the 90. While it's a big pack, the frame's still fully adjustable to suit the size of your body. Fiordland's a tough enough place to hunt and let alone having a pack that's not fitting correctly. The best way to get that organised is to go and see your local Hunting and Fish New Zealand store guys and they'll fit it to suit you. <laughs> 